from the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. The 2006 Holiday Lectures on Science. This year's lectures, Potent Biology, Stem Cells, Cloning, and Regeneration, will be given by Dr. Douglas Melton, Howard Hughes Medical Institute investigator at Harvard University, and Dr. Nadia Rosenthal, senior scientist at the European Molecular Biology Laboratory. The first lecture is titled, Understanding Embryonic Stem Cells. And now to introduce our program, the president of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute, Dr. Thomas Cech. Welcome to the Howard Hughes Medical Institute and to our 2006 Holiday Lectures on Science. We're webcasting live here from our auditorium of our headquarters in Chevy Chase, Maryland, and in the audience are almost 200 high school students from the Washington, D.C. area, including adjacent parts of Northern Virginia and Maryland. To learn more about the many research and educational activities of HHMI, please visit our website, www.hhmi.org. Now, at our website, you can subscribe to science news feeds or you can visit biointeractive pages where we are making the entire series of holiday lectures available for video podcast starting Monday, December 4th. This year, the topic is stem cells, a topic that combines exciting biology, intriguing politics, and an important opportunity for ethical analysis. In this series of four lectures, Doug Melton and Nadia Rosenthal are going to tell you exactly what stem cells are and why they have such great potential for basic research and in the future for medicine. Sometimes lost in the news reports about embryonic stem cells in research is the fact that stem cells are fundamental to our normal development and health. Without stem cells, none of us would be here in the first place. In his first lecture, Doug Melton, who's an HHMI investigator at Harvard University, will show us the fundamental role that stem cells play in normal development from egg to adult. Doug has long been an outstanding developmental biologist. His earlier work focused on understanding how frog eggs develop into tadpoles. But he became so excited about advances, advances in mammalian stem cell research that he has refocused his career towards harnessing the therapeutic potential of human stem cells. Doug will begin his lecture after this brief video introduction. One of the things I like about teaching at Harvard is it's a liberal arts college, which, which means that it selects for students who may not always be certain what they want to focus on when they come. And some of the students I've had in my experimental embryology class, for example, have been music majors. And I find that really enjoyable. Many bright young people are interested in more than one thing. Science might be it, economics might be it, music might be it. And a great thing about being here is we get some of the world's best undergraduates and it's a privilege to teach them. It's really energizing and a lot of fun. The most important thing to be a good scientist is to be deeply curious about how the world works. If without the curiosity of wanting to understand why things are the way they are and the sort of mechanism of how animals and plants develop, how does photosynthesis work, why are we the size and shape we are, what makes us think or feel what we do. If those questions don't interest someone, then science will be quite boring. For me, those are about the most interesting questions that exist, is really how did life come to be as we know it and can we understand the basis of animal and plant development? I find the basic problem of early development. How does an egg divide and make different kinds of cells? Fascinating. I found it fascinating when I was a young boy and I still find it fascinating. It's really one of the great mysteries of life and 
in a way, for me, it's puzzling. Everyone wouldn't want to study that because it's so interesting. <laughs> I'm hoping that a large number of the students in the audience will get so excited about stem cells, they'll want to come and join us and others and work in that area. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here to talk to you about this very exciting and intriguing aspect of modern biology. I'm grateful to Tom Check and HHMI for inviting me and my colleague Nadia Rosenthal to give these lectures. It's especially nice to be able to talk to high school students in particular because this area is just now beginning to blossom or burgeon. You'll see that there are very interesting problems, the answers to which we don't know. And I'm hoping that some of you will decide this is an area where you'd like to make a career and help us work on and solve these problems. Now, stem cells and cloning has been much in the news, of course, as you all know. And one of the goals of my talk is going to make sure that we understand the basic scientific facts. I'm going to begin, therefore, by talking about the basic biology of development, about how animals develop, how we come from a fertilized egg, because that sets the background for understanding the special properties of stem cells. We'll talk about stem cells, about how they're involved in regeneration, possibly involved in aging, and what is the role of cloning and cloning technology in all of these studies. Today, then, I'm going to begin in the first part with how we come from an egg. Some of this is intuitive, of course, that there's a lot of growth and development from a fertilized egg, but I'm going to review some of the basic biology of that and then we'll move on to talk about stem cells. Now, there are two aspects to development. I'm going to use the example of human development, and this involves both growth and differentiation. Uh, a human egg is about the size of a period in a sentence, and obviously when it becomes a person like yourself, there's been a lot of growth involved. Now, that development then has these two aspects that we'll say something about. In the first case, we can just think a bit about the growth. The growth is very rapid during embryonic development, and then in the adult stage, it's rather slow. It's less growth and more just maintenance. A second aspect, of course, is that cells become different. As the embryo divides, there's a period when cells have to be set aside to make different parts of the body. Now, it wasn't so obvious, it wasn't always obvious, that differentiation was a gradual process, and that's one of the points I'm going to make in this morning. It was, in fact, thought for many years, for centuries, that development was just the consequence of growth, that there was no change in the cells. And I'm going to show you a funny picture, which is how people thought about development for many centuries. This is a picture of a little animal, a human in this case, called a homunculus, who was thought to be all folded up in the sperm head, as shown here, and that all that was involved in development was the growth of this that is kind of like those little sponge toys you have as a child where you get a little sponge and you put it in water and then bingo, something comes of it. That was what was thought as being the main mechanism of animal and plant development for centuries. As you well appreciate, there is this process of differentiation, cells becoming more special as development proceeds, and that's what we'll talk about now. Now, the end point of the differentiation is that there are many cell types in your body. The exact number isn't known, but there are hundreds of different kinds of cells in your body. In this slide here, we see an adult human in the middle, and around her is uh, examples of a few kinds of cells. You can see a skin cell up at the top left. There's muscle, then blood cells, bone. I'll be talking quite a lot about the pancreas and a cell there called the beta cell. There's the liver, the intestine, and two examples of nerves. So how do these different cells arise? To introduce us to that, I'm going to show you a short video, and that video will show you that it's a gradual pro process and attend to a very important early stage when cells begin to become different. In this video, then, we'll look at the beginning of development looking into the ovary at an unfertilized egg. It then gets fertilized by sperm, which travel down the fallopian tube. So here, millions of sperm coming along. Several of them will hit the egg and try to penetrate it, but one 